Hey, so what you're getting ready to see was from the beginning of my day. It's now actually the end of my day, hence the wardrobe change. I just finished up my Zoom meetings, but just the end, the beginning of my day. And during the beginning of my day, I woke up sad, feeling defeated, feeling just, um, just not the way I needed to feel to start off my day. Okay, <laughs> just didn't. So it just kind of proves the point that you can't allow your initial feelings to dictate how your day is going to go. Like you definitely have to be deliberate in taking your thoughts captive and putting your emotions in the right space. And I just got off a Zoom meeting and the gentleman being interviewed, he said that he read somewhere that during the new year, people start these, you know, big ideas of what they want to, want to do and what they want to accomplish. And then literally by day 12, they revert, revert back to their old habits, the old way of thinking. And I can see how that happens. Like if you don't get yourself up and kick out your thoughts, put your emotions in the right space, use the tools in your tool belt by day 13, day 12, you're going to be right back in the same position. So I know if you've been on the channel for any amount of time, you probably watched the videos recently where I say I quit routines and I'm focusing in on my habits because routines, I've just been extremely defeated and feeling extremely impatient with my children just by trying to stick to routines instead of focusing on the habits that are really going to build me. So in today's video, you're going to see me going through my day from being just extremely sad and I chat about with that with you and I hope you stick to the whole video and kind of listen to that chat because I do share some ways that you know you can help yourself when you wake up and you're just all of those things in the beginning of the day and you just don't feel like you can get through it you gotta have a plan or just like the gentleman said that he read by day 13 you're gonna be back in your old ways you're gonna be defeated before the the, the month even turns to the next one and tell me which one of those tools you're going to put in your key, your your um, tool belt that you hear me chat about today, okay? I feel like I just need to say this. Like, it's the fourth day of the new year, and I, like, recommitted myself, like, even before New Year's to, like, get myself out of this routine of falling victim to my thoughts. And I just woke up this morning just feeling sad and heavy and just drained from the moment I woke up. And of course, my husband prayed with me. Um, then I laid down and slept some more. And then I got up and came downstairs and like all of these thoughts just flooding my head. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like here I am again. And it's literally thoughts about things and situations that have existed yesterday and the day before that. And it just this morning, they all felt so heavy, you know. So I'm like, what are you going to do? Are you going to let this sadness and heaviness just dictate your day? Or are you just going to try to do something and use the tools in your tool belt to move past it? So in that moment, I just decided to open up, to put on the um, worship music for kids. If you don't already listen to this with your little ones, if you have little ones on YouTube, the channel called Listener Kids. So we, I put on a worship music for them to kind of engage in while I, I just opened my Bible and um, just started looking for scriptures about how much God loves us, you know, and that he loves me so much that he's not going to forget about me or leave me alone in my thoughts. So and then I started reading the uh, um a Bible plan that my husband had invited me to participate in, in the Bible app. And I'll put it on the screen, but pretty much the question, it was like literally what I needed, like literally like so on point. And then one of the questions was like, um, what security might you need to walk away from to reach your destiny? And for me, it's just the need to control, the need to control to create a false sense of safety. And I say false because it never really works. But through my life and the traumas that I have ex experienced, I've always felt like the need to control. And because I felt like if I was in charge or controlling, then I would be able to dictate the results and then in turn feel safe because I was in control and not anyone else. And that just simply doesn't work. 
So that question was exactly what I needed to bring me back to the space of I'm not controlling anymore because that false sense of safety doesn't last. So that was just so good for me to to get back to that place of knowing that I have relinquished control like I have never done in my life. To be able to get to a place of knowing <clears throat> that God is caring for me, number one, and that he He has done this so beautiful for me and my family that I can no longer try to do it by myself because what I am putting, what I am getting back is just my results. And I want the God kind of results. So it was just me taking that moment to just um, read that Bible plan and just, you know, get back to knowing that I can control all I want. The security I get from controlling is a false sense of safety. Um, And then I decided to call my husband while he was on the way to work. And he's like, oh, what's going on? What's up? Because he's not used to me calling him on the way to work. And I just said, nothing's going on. I just wanted to, like, not stay in a routine of feeling sad, stuck, and heavy so early in the morning. So I confessed that to him. And he's like, I'm just going to be praying for you throughout the day and know that I don't think you need to do anything different or you need to get up and try to create, do, earn, or do anything. You need to be where you are and and just remember that God has you in this place of being still so that you can heal. Like you need it not to do, earn, or be anything else in this season than what you are right now because I needed to get to a place of true healing and being able to be in a place of slow living so that I can really unpack my habits, my rituals, and routines that I have been carrying for so many years um, due to life experiences. So I needed him to affirm me in that way and kind of remind me. Um, But yeah, I also wanted to say I'm still reading atomic habits and I went back to page 16 (laughs) that's why I'm still reading it's taking me so long I keep going back and he says pretty much that habits are a compound interest of self-improvement it says the same way that money multiplies through compress compound interest the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them and he also goes on to explain that um, we don't really appreciate in daily life like those small changes that we make because small changes don't result in anything big immediately. And because they don't result in anything big immediately, we tend to go back and revert to our old ways, our previous routines and ways of thinking and being because we did it for, you know, a month or three days And then it didn't result in anything huge. So we just go back to the previous way that we used to do things. And unfortunately, that's not how transformation takes place. You've got to be consistent. And that's my word. My thing, my it for 2023 is like consistency. So I'm not going back. Nope, not going back. I'm going to keep going back in this book as many times as I need to, but I'm not going back to my old ways of thinking, being, doing, and my old previous routines. I'm just not going back. Guys, I think the greatest thing we could do for ourselves in these moments is literally just enjoy right where you are. Sometimes it seems easier said than done, but in all honesty and all truly, truliness, it's not a word. Honesty and in all honesty and truly, no, in all honesty and truth, um, it's easier than our minds allow us to think that it is. <sighs> right, boo? Right? Right. 